And there's one topic that people will stop you in the streets to talk about, and it's Chris Bowen's big car ban. Now, as you know, Australians love their utes. They have for a very long time now. They love them to pull their trailers, to go to work, to pick stuff up, to go for a camp, but at the very least, to be in charge of your life. Australians like buying these cars. In fact, last year, the Ford Ranger and the Toyota Hilux, which you can see here, sold twice as many as numbers three and four on the list, the Isuzu D-Max Ute and the Toyota RAV4. Now, just have a look there. 120,000 cars are either Hiluxes or Ford Rangers. Australians choose to buy big cars because it's a big country with jobs to be done. But because Australia is 1% of global emissions, China is 30%, but we must do everything here to save the planet, such big cars are ruled unacceptable by the class of people who whinge on Twitter, the people who advise governments or the people who get free cars on the behalf of taxpayers, which is why the People's Republic of Canberra have said no more combustion engines will be sold in our National Capital Territory after 2035. Now, I'm thinking if somebody wants to buy a ute, they may well just pop over the border to Queanbeyan. They might head up the road to Yass. They may go to Goulburn. So it is going to be available. But the point is, as the ultra-left governments go, go other governments later when the left get to power. But as we know, one of the ways that the federal government would like to emulate what is happening at the local council, sorry, territory level, when it came to the ACT and getting rid of big cars that Australians need to use for work or like to use for home, well, enter... The endless stuff-up that is Chris Bowen. Now, fresh from being a federal shadow treasurer and the immigration minister, and I've got plenty to talk to about that in a moment or two's time, now he's there as the climate change minister. And because that is what the lefties love in the press gallery or most people on Twitter, he can kind of do no wrong. So when he turns around and says that we're going to change the fuel standards for cars in Australia after 2025, well, what he's really saying is that there will be a limit on the types of big cars you can buy. But because, of course, he's come up with the clever long series of words to make it seem like nothing's being banned, this is what he's saying. No model will be uh, mandatory, no model will be banned. But if you keep lowering the amount of emissions that cars are allowed to make, guess what? Eventually, you're only left with one commercial choice, and it's the one that the ACT is going to tell you is the only one you can make 10 years from now. Electric, and that's it. Something that Peter Dutton is noticing and now campaigning on. Under Anthony Albanese's ute tax and family car tax, families will pay thousands of dollars more for their new Hilux or their new Ranger or their BT50 or their D-Max. And some of those cars, uh, for example, a D-Max, is likely to leave the Australian market. Now, again, for a lot of people who work in the media, when they hear this conversation about utes and big cars, they think, bogans in the bush. But the reality is, as I showed you before, more than double the next two cars are big utes that are sold here in Australia. So... People are now starting to realise the penny is dropping, that the spin and the BS that they announce one day has got real details the next. And can I say, stop falling for this trick that lefty governments put out, which is to call things like a ban on big cars the title that the government chooses to put on it. Because while that might be the official title of the bill, remember the mining tax was the resource rent tax? Remember that the carbon tax was a price on carbon. So I don't care what they call them. What we in the real world know them as is a ban on big cars. And this is a big joint where people want to buy them. And now the car industry is noticing that even if you will be able to buy one of these cars and not be able to buy one in a place like the ACT, it's going to cost you a lot of money. In fact, up to $25,000 on top of the existing price of many utes and SUVs. 
Don't forget, hybrid cars under this government, this summer, they put the luxury car tax on them. Now, Labor is pledged to introduce the fuel efficiency standards for new cars by next year. Remember, that's the ban on big cars, which would increase by about 60% over five years. And the government has rejected claims that this will force up the price of any vehicle and argued that motorists will actually save $1,000 a year when it comes to the fuel charges. So despite the fact that the people who are making and selling the cars are telling you the reality of this policy will add to the cost of these cars if they're available at all, and even if you try to save petrol by going to something like a hybrid car, that too will cost more money because the deemed car of the future is exclusively electric. Now, if you want to buy one, good luck to you. I'm a petrol head, you know that. But I don't have a problem with EVs. What I have a problem with is people being told what they can and can't buy when we are 1% of global emissions in terms of a problem. China is 30%. The rest of what we used to be called the third world, or if you want to throw in India, that's well and truly almost two-thirds of the world's emissions problems. Oh, but Australia, if we're all buzzing around in electric utes which don't exist, of course, then everything will be awesome. Well, again, remember this claim about saving $1,000. Catherine King, who is standing by a clueless, a clueless Bowen, making his announcement, she again repeated this rubbish promise. We know that by 2028, this will save uh, average consumers on each vehicle each year over $1,000. Now, we've talked about it since they made this announcement, but certainly lots of other people are starting to catch on and lots of people have been railing against this for the past few days. But I've got to say, when you think about something like a new Land Cruiser, and remember, the number one, number two car sold in the country right now is the Ford Ranger or the Hilux. These are the cars people want to drive. And my mate Ray Hadley proves why he's in the Hall of Fame, why he's the GOAT. Because he's able to say, well, OK, if you save $1,000 a year when it comes to petrol, but I've had to spend an extra $25,000 to buy it based off today's prices, what does it mean, Ray? Casanova says, oh, hang on a sec, they'll save $1,000 a year for fuel. But under the analysis they've done, the motoring industry, Ford Ranger, the top-selling car in 2023, would go up for between 11350 and 18 grand. 18 grand. A Land Cruiser from Toyota... A very popular car would be penalised between nineteen five, nineteen thousand five hundred, and twenty five thousand dollars. So to get your money back, Casanova, you've got to own the Land Cruiser for twenty five years to break even. That's to break even, not to make a quid. To break even, you imbecile. And I share Ray's frustration because Chris Bowen honestly has no idea what he's doing. He knows who he's pandering to but he has no idea where real people are. Real people in the suburbs that he claims to represent, let alone the regions. People buy SUVs when they're dropping their kids off at private school in teal seats. Sorry, that's just the way it is. And people are driving utes to renovate those houses all over the country, let alone everything else that's required in a big car. Or, God forbid, you just want a big car because you've got a big family and they've got lots of stuff. Now, to give you an idea again about how Chris Bowen has no idea what he's doing, and you can always tell a politician who doesn't know anything about electric vehicles, is when they pose for photos like this when you're charging an electric vehicle, holding on to the handle like it's a petrol bowser. You see, you don't actually have to hold on to it. You don't physically pump anything into it. You plug it in. You don't stand there next to your toaster holding the bit that's connected to the power point. But this idiot, well, it's all about the sizzle and not the steak. But it got me thinking about, OK, how does this bloke, who considers himself to be a bit of a whiz, a bit of a, a, bit of a guy who's got a bit of a connection, a bit of a smart thinker, how does he end up in a scenario where he is openly trying to make it harder for people in his own electorate to buy the cars they want to buy to travel all around the big city of Sydney or further out if that's what they choose to do with their weekend? Well, it dawned on me. This bloke has not had to own a car for 20 years. You see, he was first elected to the parliament in 2004. Every member of parliament, be they a backbencher, a senator, minister or a shadow minister, are given a car paid for by you and I. Now, of course, this idiot ran at one point in time to be the leader of the opposition in 2019. He was hoping to get the spot that Albo ended up getting after the shortened loss. 
he decided to take the media back to the fibro house under which his family toiled and worked hard away to say he was one of the common people. This was while he was announcing, um, well, his uh, sleeping patterns after losing the 2019 election. I woke up on Sunday morning devastated. I admit devastated for myself, devastated for my party, devastated for the country. Now, this bloke, I tell you what, he's got more tickets on himself than Taylor Swift has ever sold. Now, this guy, fresh from being one of the reasons people didn't vote for Bill Shorten to become the Prime Minister, ran to be the Labor Party leader. Again, come one, come all. He's been thinking about it all the time. He's a politician since he was a, a, a local mayor. Oh, you know what I'll do when I'm starting my run for the Prime Ministership? I'll stand in front of the Fibro House. I'm a worker. I'm one of those people. Do you know how long his run for the leadership of the Labor Party lasted? 29 hours. Not even two days. Not even two days. And he pulled out because there was a stitch-up done between the left of Anthony Albanese, which is, yes, you can have it now, and the right, which was Jim Chalmers, which is, you can have it later. But this clueless political figure thought that he deserved the chance to become the Prime Minister of Australia after being the Immigration Minister back in the Rudd and Gillard years, when the Australian boat, po uh, boat people policy was, if you can get here, you can stay here. He was the bloke in charge that never turned a boat around, that didn't send people to offshore processing, that ended up with 50,000 people coming here and 1,300 people dying as a result of the open doors policy. And then, of course, he showed the hubris of posting this photo with a whole bunch of other, back then, election losers, saying, we're ready to govern. Because there we had the power team. We had... Bouncing Bill Shorten, we had Penny Wong, we had Tanya Plibersek, Grim Jim was there, and there he was, ready to be the shadow, tre to be the next treasurer of Australia, was Chris Bowen, who showed the political insights of Malcolm Turnbull calling a double disillusion. Because remember, when his policies, which were all about getting rid of negative gearing, increasing taxes, particularly on people who decided to become self-funded retirees, what was that famous thing that this idiot actually said? Remember, he said, if you don't like the policy, you can vote against it. And guess what people did? They voted against it. So now this guy, who has not had to buy a car for 20 years, is introducing new laws to tell you what car you can buy in 10 years' time. This bloke who claims to be of the working-class fibro house, who got it wrong on the borders, who got it wrong on taxes and continues to get it wrong when it comes to the types of vehicles that Australians want or need, but most importantly, to have the choice. Now, I hope that this bloke's days in politics are numbered. Firstly, because, obviously, at one point I hope that this government goes. It deserves to, much sooner rather than later. But also because this bloke has made every wrong decision possible in every job he's ever had in the parliament. Which is why I am fascinated to see that there is a chance he might get booted out at the next election. You see, one of the great th threats to the Labor Party isn't just the Greens, who will take some seats off them at the next election, but also it's local independent mayors, like Di Lee, who took out Christina Keneally, and the local mayor who is thinking seriously about challenging Chris Bowen. Mr Mayor, on the behalf of everyone who wants to buy whatever damn car they want, or anyone who just wants to see the back of Bowen, run, mate, run.